One of our favorite guests, Dr. Trita Parsi, joining us now. He's the executive vice president at the Quincy Institute, here to talk about those recent elections in Iran and also what's happening there in Israel. Let's start with Iran. We'll put this up there on the screen from the Associated Press around exactly what happened here in the recent Iranian elections. Dr. Parsi, you are on our old show, Rising, talking to us often about how the Biden administration better get their act together or a hardliner was going to get elected in Iran. I mean, is that essentially essentially what's happened here? Like how much more difficult is this going to be in terms of making sure that the U.S. Get, does get back into the Iranian nuclear deal? First of all, thanks so much for having me. I'm delighted. To, my first appearance on Breaking Point. Uh, delighted to be back with you guys. Uh, what has happened in Iran and why it's happened, I think is really important to understand. First of all, these were clearly not free and fair elections. I mean, the amount of uh, manipulation that took place in ensuring, engineering Raisi's rise uh, and victory was uh, unprecedented. Nevertheless, the hardliners in Iran have tried to do this numerous times before, um, but this time they went much further than before for several different reasons. Uh, and one of the most important reasons was the manner in which the Rouhani government, and with him, the idea of engagement with the West had been discredited. As a result, primarily of Trump walking out of the deal and reimposing sanctions. And then later on, when the Biden administration came in, unfortunately, roughly two months that were wasted. Um, and uh, we are now in a situation in which even after the election, there is still not a deal. Uh, it would definitely have been a bump for them if, if uh, there had been a much quicker return. But the real problem, I have to say, is the manner in which Trump walked out of the deal, proved the argument of the hardliners correct, which is you can't trust the United States. And let me just say a couple of things what happened with the economy over there. 10 million Iranians went into poverty as a result of these sanctions between 2018 and 2019. Um, the middle class that constituted 45% of the country dropped to 30%. One third of it was wiped out. And I know we talk a lot about the middle class on this show. You can just imagine one third of the middle class being wiped out. Right. So a lot of them, and, and the middle class was the engine and the main constituency of the reformists and those who want to have a more open relationship with the West and a more open society internally. The manner in which they were devastated, the manner in which their leadership essentially was proven wrong is the reason, the main reasons as to why we have Raisi president in Iran now. And what do you expect the policy implications of this to be? Well, when it comes to the nuclear deal, I think the Iranians under his leadership will continue to try to get back in there. The negotiations are going to are, are taking place right now. But I do think there is a major, major problem that has been presented here. First, uh, from the U.S. perspective, the Biden team wants to quickly renegotiate the deal once they're in the deal, meaning that they want to make it longer and stronger. I don't see much appetite on the side of the Raisi government to engage in such discussions. Uh, they want to see the U.S. prove that it will stick to the deal first. And their idea of proving it may be two years, three years, and the Biden administration doesn't believe that it does have that amount of time. But perhaps even more importantly, I personally don't believe that we can go through this once again and just have a nuclear deal and nothing else built around it. Mm -hmm. The idea that you can have this JCPOA existing in a strategic vacuum, there needed to be at least a positive trajectory that uh, a humble one, a positive trajectory of U.S.-Iran relations in order to protect the JCPOA. And I don't see that being very likely right now because the Raisi government, because of this past experience and because of their own suspicions, are going to look towards China rather than the United States. So, Dr. Parsi, put this in the context, this is what we wanted to talk to you also about, is with these new elections in Israel. So let's put this up there on the screen, the Israeli parliament, the Knesset officially approving the new government. I mean, this is somebody who has already spoken about uh, against the Iranian nuclear deal. How does this change the situation in the Middle East? In some ways, it's the beginning of a new era. Netanyahu is gone, but a lot of his policies seem to remain with us. What's your read of the situation? I think there's several different factors to take into account. First of all, yes, this uh, Bennett is in no way, shape, or form a friend of the JCPOA. He has spoken out against it as well. He does not have the same skills, the same experience, the same connections in Washington to be able to do damage to the Biden administration's efforts to revive the nuclear deal as Netanyahu could. So I think the Biden administration is probably taking a sigh of relief. 
But their relief may not be very long, mindful of the fact that the coalition that Bennett has is a very, very shaky one. It's not clear how long it will survive. Moreover, there is a broader problem, which is that ultimately, if the United States really want to resolve this issue with Iran, not just a nuclear deal, but in general, uh, there's going to be opposition from the Israelis, uh, whether it's Netanyahu in power or uh, anyone else. Because what the JCPOA is, and I've spoken on the show about this before, is the exit ticket for the United States out of the Middle East. The one factor that could bring the United States back into a big war in the Middle East is Iran's nuclear program. If you manage to put that in a box and essentially resolve it, then it paves the way for the United States to be able to dramatically reduce its military presence in the region. That is not something that the Saudis want. That is not something the Emiratis want. And that is certainly not something that the Israelis want. And that's not just Netanyahu. Mm -hmm. What is your read on the Biden administration so far and how receptive they will be to these entreaties coming from Israel? Well, I think the Biden administration has adopted a strategy that I personally don't agree with, the idea that you can just, um, you know, tr think you can treat all of those problems with the Israelis behind the scenes, and as a result, the Israelis will not create problems. I think we, they caught a lucky break because of the internal challenges that Netanyahu had, and as a result, he was not in a position to be as problematic as he otherwise wanted to be. I mean, when he had the opportunity, when he was standing there right next to Tony Blinken, it was not supposed to be a conversation with the media about the JCPOA, but he nevertheless brought it in to the surprise of Tony Blinken. So mm. the idea that you can actually have confidence that the Israelis will agree to some sort of a quiet uh, arrangement and as a result not pursue what they think is in their interest, I simply do not believe it, unless the United States is willing to bring out some much more heavy instruments, essentially start talking about conditioning aid and, and things of that matter and make sure that there are consequences for the Israelis, for the Saudis, for the Emiratis, and for everyone else who is a partner of the United States, if they act in such a manner that is to the detriment of U.S. interest. We yeah. have not yeah. seen that with the Biden administration vis-a-vis -vis Israel in any way, shape, or form. Nope, life. not even a little bit. Absolutely. Well, sir, really appreciate you joining us for your inaugural, uh, your inaugural appearance. I know there's going to be many more. We appreciate your analysis always. Thank you. Always Thank love you to so see much you, sir. Thank you. You too. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks, everybody, for watching, guys. We really appreciate it. Just as a reminder, you can watch the entire show uncut if you become a premium member today. One hour early, same thing whenever it comes to audio. And we get to do weekly Ask Me Anythings, which are always really fun. We're actually just about to record it, so that's a fun thing. You guys can sign up right now. Link is down there in the description. 100% powered by Supercast, who we love and are great partners with. And we will see you all next week. Yes, AMAs. That's our that's our version of fun here. Yeah. It's sad, but actually true. Um, <laughs> we love to have you guys. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again next week, guys.